Hi, my name is Mon. I'm going to present part of my television infographics and other graphs because I'm bored and like data slideshow, which is just a bunch of small data projects I've done. Today I'm going to show you my Sims 4 packs data analysis section. So real quick, what I did for this project is I just looked at all of the current Sims 4 packs that are available from the first one, Outdoor Retreat, through the most recent one, For Rent. Uh, this is January 2024, so I do plan on making another video in the future in the event that they inevitably stop making Sims 4 packs so I can do some more comparisons. But for now, I'm just using about, what is it, like nine years worth of packs. So the first DLC that the Sims 4 released was Outdoor Retreat on January 13th, 2015. Then in March of 2023, infants were added to the base game coinciding with the release of Growing Together. And with this new lives page, that pack and following packs included some cast and build buy items for infants. I was originally going to record this video um, without the three expansion packs that have released since the infants growing together horse ranch and for rent because they have items for infants but they are included in this i'm including every pack through january of 2024 but i do predict that there will be a slight increase in cast items and possibly built by items as more things are added for infants when they stop making some sort packs i do plan on making another video as i said and doing comparisons to see if cast items or built by increase as they're accounting for this new life stage also in september of 2023 a new stuff pack was was announced and the last stuff pack which i think was paranormal was released in january of 2021 so it had been like over two years like two and a half years since the last stuff pack but let's look at the the item count for expansion packs so i have separated this into build buy items and create a sim items so the average number of build buy items per for an expansion pack is 182 and the average for cast is 119 and i do think it's very interesting with the exception of growing together uh build buy is entirely above the cast items and horse ranch it's like i think there's a difference of like one between horse ranch and seasons here but then as i mentioned with the three most recent expansion packs there have been items for infants and so if we exclude those three packs from the average cast it's 109 is the average and i think that is definitely brought up to 119 by growing together because they have so many things for infants but i don't have growing together so i can't actually speak to how many of those are for infants? But if we look at the cost, a full price expansion costs $40 in the US. The 15 current expansions have an average of 302 items. And as I said, the three most recent expansion packs have the highest have had the highest three item counts, which are over 300. The most is 391 from going together. And I think Horse Ranch and uh, For Rent are maybe closer to like 350. So Growing Together is definitely like the highest by quite a bit. For each pack, I divided $40 by the number of total items in the pack. And so the average cost per item among all the packs is 13.4 cents, but the lowest is growing together at 10.2 cents per item, and the highest is seasons at 14.3 cents per item. So now let's look at game packs. So the average build buy for game packs is 110 items, and the average cast is 66. Unlike expansions where there was a like complete like separation, this is there's actually quite a bit of overlap between the number of build buy and cast items. The highest is J jungle adventure. In the lowest is Realm of Magic, the highest for cast is Journey to Batu, and the lowest is Dine Out. I don't have any of these packs, so I can't really speak to uh, why there m might be a difference. However, Jungle Adventure, I know, is like creating like a n new vacation world that's a completely different style from like a lot of the uh, other worlds that they had at the time. So that, that probably has something to do with why there's more build by for Jungle Adventure. And Journey to Batu, I guess you got out of like the Star Wars clothes and game and for game pack costs. A full price game costs $20 in the United States. And the 14 current expansions have an average of 175 items. The most is 250 from Journey to Batu. The average cost per item, again, taking $20 and dividing it by each uh, by each pack's total number of items, we get 11.8 cents. And the lowest is Journey to Batu at 8 cents per item. And the highest is Realm of Magic at 15.4 cents per item. And if we compare that to expansion packs, we get we can see that game packs are actually like more worth your money because you're paying less because you're paying less for each item because there's like more items for the cost, if that makes sense. And if we look at stuff packs, the average build buy is 33 items and the average cast is 28. So it's they're very similar to each other compared to game and uh, expansion packs. The most build buy is Laundry Day and the least is Luxury Party. The most create a sim is home, chef, is home Chef Hustle. And the lowest is tied between Perfect Patio and Fitness. I'm a little surprised that Home Chef Hustle is the highest for cast. From my understanding, you know, it's a kitchen pack. So you're getting a lot of kitchen stuff. So I'm a little surprised that there's the most cast. And Luxury Party being down here makes sense because 
before uh, Home Chef Hustle, Luxury Party was also the highest for cast. So I think, you know, you get in a lot of like ball gowns, but not a lot of like tables. I think there's like a glow cube or something. And if you look at the cost for stuff pack for stuff packs, if we're looking at the cost for stuff packs, a full price stuff pack costs 10 US dollars. The 19 current stuff packs have an average of 60.4 items. The most is 71 total items from Home Chef Hustle, Kids Room Stuff, and Paranormal. And I will add that Home Chef Hustle and Paranormal are like the two most recent and Kids Room Stuff is just like a slightly older stuff pack. The average cost per item is 17 cents. The lowest is tied for the above three at 14.1 cents per item and the highest is fi fitness stuff at 24.4 cents per item. And if we compare the average again, expansion packs were around 13, game packs were around 11, and stuff packs are around 17. So stuff packs you actually get the least for your money Game packs, you get the most for your money, and expansion packs are kind of in between, but you're but this isn't factoring in gameplay or world. Stuff packs, you don't get a world, which, I mean, it's higher and you don't get a world. Game packs, you sometimes get a world, and most expansion packs have a world. Let's look at kits, but the thing you need to remember about kits is that they're either build, buy, or create a sim. There are currently none that are both. I don't expect there'd be any soon that are both, since they seem to... I mean, there's been, like, I think, like, over 20, and they're all either build buy or cast. Okay, so the average build buy is about 24 items and the average for cast is about 26 items. The kit with the most build buy items is bathroom clutter, which makes sense, like 31 smaller objects. And then the least is country kitchen. And then the least least is busted dust where you just get five vacuums. With that one is a little different though because it's more about gameplay and it's like kind of the only more gameplay pack. And for cast, the highest is moonlight chic by quite a few items and the lowest is Incheon Arrivals. And as for costs for kits, a full price kit costs $5 in the US and the 25 current kits have an average of 24.6 items across both types. The most is 30 from Moonlight Chic. The average cost per item from both cast and build buy is 23.3 cents. The lowest is Moonlight Chic at 15.2 cents per item and the highest is Bust the Dust at $1.00 per item because it's five vacuums for five dollars but again there's like gameplay involved in that so that can't be factored into this and comparing to the other three types of dlc prices this is obviously the highest you get the least for your money with kits so this is the average difference between the number of build buy items and the number of cast items per pack and also by type of pack it's also just the absolute value of the difference so it's all positive on this graph and some packs it does make sense if one is bigger for example werewolves need new cast objects for your cult sims and same with pets they have new cast items for the pets and nifty knitting with like knit clothes i think and then the average the average difference in number of objects for expansion packs is 63 so the one with the biggest difference is get to work followed by get together and the lowest difference is growing together which is actually the one that has is the only one that has more cast but it only has one cast item more than uh build buy items then the average for a game packs is 51 uh the most recent two are the only ones that have had more casts uh home chef hustle and paranormal uh, jungle adventure has the highest difference and my wedding stories has the lowest difference and then for stuff packs laundry day and luxury party are tied uh for the highest difference and tiny living has the lowest difference and the average is 13 and most of them are more build by but this one kind of well, i mean as you can see the difference is much lower overall compared to the other two so it's just a lot closer overall there, these are the lots per world in all the worlds through 2020 through january 2024 uh there are two worlds san machino and evergreen harbor which have apartments i included each apartment as one lot but then there's the issue of tomerang where they have apartments sorry they have apartments but they're not the same kind of apartments as in san machino and evergreen harbor so in tomerang i just included the lots and i did not include any like pre-built uh apartment buildings that come with that pack also several worlds have secret lots like uh willow creek or realm of magic those are not included but over 25 worlds there are a total of 307 lots with an average of 12.5 lots per, per world or world the biggest is san machino and that's again mostly due to the apartments but the second biggest is windenburg which i believe is from get together and the lowest is batu because it technically has zero lots but it is also a vacation world i will add that the second lowest is magnolia promenade which has four lots that one comes with uh get to work and it's this kind of like a small shopping district but now what i want to do is i want to look at the sims 3 lots per world i grew up playing the sims 3 before the sims 4 came out and the the worlds there are a lot bigger be, but that's mostly due to the fact that you're unlike the sims 4 you can't 
easily travel between the worlds. You're kind of stuck in one. So like if you have the pets expansion pack, like I do, the base game world in that in The Sims 3 Sunset Valley will have the equestrian center and every other world will. Uh, Ambitions, Sims 3 Ambitions adds also has lots that it'll add and it'll add it to all of the worlds not just the one that comes with that pack because you can't easily travel within the worlds. Also, The Sims 3, unlike Sims 4, is completely open world, whereas The Sims 4 is like barely open neighborhood. Like you can wander around the neighborhood, but you can't easily go onto other lots without a loading screen. But also right now, The Sims 4 has 25 worlds and The Sims 3 only ever had 23 worlds from both expansions and The Sims 3 store. But The Sims 3 had a total of 1,849 lots compared to just over 300 that we have now in The Sims 4. And there was an average of 80.39 lots per world. And, uh, and again, The Sims 3 had more types of community lots and there was also, and you couldn't travel between the worlds. So you needed to have all the types of community lots in one world. So that does contribute to the higher number of lots. Oh, I didn't actually label this one. I made this really late last night and I forgot to add labels on this one. But the for Sims 3, the world with the most number of lots is Isla Paradiso, which is basically the equivalent of Solani, I think. It's from the Island Paradise pack. And the lowest is Al Samhara, which is from the uh, World Adventures pack. It's like one of the world you can travel to on vacation. I think it's one supposed to be like Egypt. Let's do a comparison of Sims 3 to Sims 4 worlds. Sims 3 has 23 open worlds and the Sims 4 has 25 worlds that are barely open neighborhood. Sims 3 has 1,849 lots with the most being Isla, Par Isla Paradiso with 118, whereas Sims 4 has 307 lots with the most being San Machino at 30. Again, that's including apartments. There are 538 total community lots most coming from Isla Paradiso with 52 and the Sims 4 has 83 community lots but with the most coming from Windenburg at 13. However, the thing to remember is that three worlds have zero community lots, and that's Newcrest because it's completely empty, but two because it has no community because it has no lots at all, and vampires because it's a game pack world and it's just where the vampires live. The Sims 3 had 578 inhabited lots, meaning that there is a not that there is a household there. I, it's not including lots that have a house built but no one living in it but the most is from lucky palms with 37 inhabited lots and the sims 4 has only 74 inhabited lots with the most coming from windenburg they had eight households there are 1218 townies with the most coming from bridgeport which had 72 townies and then the sims 4 only has 212 townies with the most coming from windenburg obviously with 26. the sims 3 had an average of 2.11 sims per household with the most sims per household in oasis landing with 2.92 and the sims 4 has an average of 2.86 cents per household with the most being Copperdale with 4.67 and Copperdale comes with the Sims 4 high school years I have this pack and there are three while there are only three households they all are quite big because they all have to have like teens I think two of them have like multiple teens but they're like you know they're big family they're families not just like single sims or couples. And finally, let's look at the differences between packs that existed in The Sims 3 and equivalent packs exist in The Sims 4. So first with Sims University, and really we're just looking at the- Um, yeah, world comparison. So The Sims University, I don't know if that's actually what the world is called. That's just kind of what it said on the internet when I googled Sims 3 University World. Compare that to Sims 4 University World, which is Brightchester. Sims 3 had 56 lots with 48 townies, and Sims 4 had 13 lots and 8 townies. And if we look at Appaloosa Plains, which came with the Sims 3 pets, it had 69 lots and 39 townies, including pets. Compare that to Brindleton Bay, where we have 16 lots and only 7 townies. And then the Sims 3 base game came with Sunset Valley. This is obviously a bigger world because it was the base game. It had 92 lots and 67 townies. If you compare that to all three of the Sims 4 base game worlds, Willow Creek, Newcrest, and Oasis Springs. We have 56, 57 lots and 26 townies. And the Sims 3 Island Paradise came with Isla Paradiso with 118 lots and 53 townies. Whereas the Sims 4 Island Living came with Sulani with 15 lots and 11 townies. The Sims 4 Late Night came with the City World of Bridgeport with 82 lots and 72 townies. And that is including apartments, I believe, in San Machuno which came with City Living with 30 lots and 15 townies. And then The Sims 3 Generations did not come with a world, but The Sims 4, we got the equivalent, I think more or less an equivalent pack of uh, Growing Together, which came with San Sequoia with 12 lots and 14 townies. So The Sims 4 does win there. And I would say the other um, equivalent pack is Seasons, but Seasons didn't come with a world in either pack. Okay, so that's the end of my Sims 4 presentation. I hope you liked that and maybe found it helpful in deciding which pack to buy, although probably not. I don't know how that information would be helpful. If you want to see more day analysis videos, especially ones relating to TV shows, subscribe to my channel because I do have several and I'm always working on new projects.